Hi guys, this video is going to focus on importing graphics into your Sling Studio. So, I turned on my iPhone and I'm looking at a sugar bowl sitting on my table and I'm going to create a new project. So, create new project, new project, I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to call this Bug TV. For this purpose, I'm not going to bother setting any of the other settings for this because this is just for demonstrations on about how to bring in the graphics. I'm going to hit save and I'm going to hit set up for my storage and it will then ask me if I want to set up my audio sources I click yes and I make sure that my iPhone is muted so here is our sugar bowl and now we need to import the graphics so I'm going to click graphics up at the very top and come down to the very bottom where it says add graphics and I've stored my graphics on my actual SD card that's plugged into the sling. And that's the only thing that I use that SD card for. Otherwise, I save everything to an SSD drive connected to the USB-C. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to jump over to graphics. So in here you see five different files. And four of them are okay. The fifth one is, says that it's an unsupported format. That's because it's a Photoshop file. So jpeg and png so we're going to go through both of them to see the difference and what i'm going to do is, is i'm going to add these first two down on the bottom you have two choices add to project or copy to sling studio if you were working the graphics off of the external hard drive and you wanted to copy it onto the internal drive you could do that or um, you can leave it on the drive i tend to put my graphics on the sd card so for this purposes i hit add to project so it's going to copy and I'm going to press OK. So here's our two images. So I'm going to click to turn the first one on. Here's our bug. I can move this around by clicking on it. And here's our other bug. And I can move that around. So what's the difference between the two? JPEG images are the is the one on the right. JPEGs have white backgrounds behind them. In some scenarios that's good. In other scenarios that's bad. So I'm just going to reduce this down and bring it down to the corner here and hit save. And this one I'm going to bring all the way down and bring it down into the corner and hit save. So I can toggle each one on and off. I can bring each one in and out. If I wanted to stack one on top of the other, how could I get the white one on top? Well, I click on the white bug and I click this second icon here, which basically means bring to the front. So when I click it away, if I grab this thing and slide it around, it then stays on top. The next icon of curl is the opacity, and this is lighter or darker. Again, you could adjust this whatever way you want it to be. Next icon across is the full screen mode. Brings it all the way up and then bring it back down. Um, and last is pinning. Pinning basically means to keep that bug or that image on top of your footage at all times. I don't always use this because I'd like to be able to control it and sometimes I forget and sometimes I get nervous. So I tend not to use the pin, the pin button, but you can if you want to. And I'm just going to slide this over to the other side. And if I wanted to bring the whole thing live, I tap bring to live and there's our two bugs sitting there. <clears throat> now what's the difference with the other two graphics that I created? Well, I'm going to bring this back up to the top and this black bug here, when I move it over a dark area, it's hard to see. So what I did was is I created another graphic, <coughs> excuse me, and this one is called Bug TV 2 and Bug TV 2 PNG. So I'm going to add those to the project. And now let's just take a quick look and see what the difference between the two are. So I'm going to bring on this bug TV and you can see there is a white line that I've created around the edge of the bug TV logo. So if I reduce this down and bring it into the corner now, well actually I'll bring it over to the other one so you can see the difference. Now you can see how sometimes having a white line around the edge works, sometimes having a white box around the end. So pay attention to when you save your files from Photoshop and I hope this helped. Have a great day.